page 19, Forsaken. This is a really pretty arrangement of this, but it's a bit tricky. 3-4 time, no sharps or flats, we're in the key of C major. So make sure you can do the C major scale and the A minor scale, because it also has no sharps or flats. You ought to be doing these, in my opinion, two octaves up and down by now. Comes in on a pickup beat. Now let's take it and just make sure we got the hand separately going first. We have three and. and then here. Hold the E down, that's a dotted half note. Here, and then go on. Three, five here. Cross over. If, you, if your hand's big enough, if not, you gotta use thumb again. And then come down. And they want thumb again. I would do a two, three, four, one. One in. And then here. And you're doing that again. And third line down, first major. They want a thumb again. I suggest go ahead and use two. And then here. You're kind of in this core, and that's the fingering for it, so why not? I can use two, and then four, three, three, two, two again, and now thumb, two, five, and then I recommend a one, five, and then a two, five, like they're saying two, and you can use two, five here if you want, or I'll use three, five. This is the last measure of the third line. I can do that, or that, whichever. Or, I'll leave that up to you, and then reach down. I do a, you can do a f one five on all of these at the last line. I don't recommend it, but you can. I would prefer to do a five, and then a one four, and then a one five, and then a one four. I'm going to separate that. And they want a one two, and a one. I prefer two three. Here, and then cross the thumb under. Here. You gotta lift up anyway. Again, a one five, one four, one five, one four. That's my impression of the right hand. I, I, you can decide how you're gonna fingering it. There's nothing wrong with the fingering in the book. I just find it a little cumbersome sometimes. In the left hand, well, we got a lot of this one and two and one and two and three and one throughout the whole thing. It's going to be fun. Put the hands together. together. Play it as legato as you can. And here we have a problem. We've got a lot of problems, but I'm going to talk about one here. When I'm trying to play things legato, and I'm first starting like on the first measure, uh, the first full measure here, and I want to, I want, I'd like to connect, because that's the melody, so... tend to tense up and I play it loud. I just It just happens. It's just because I'm trying to hold the things down and I'm struggling to keep it down and it gets tense and then the muscles hurt and things go wrong. So as you're learning to do this, as you're going through it, try and play it really, really, really super soft, both hands, just as soft as you can play it. And still connect it. soft to both. So do, do the best we can. Stay relaxed. That's your challenge throughout this piece is to stay relaxed. It's all legato. Just connect it as legato as you can. You can lift up 
for the phrasing in the right hand, that's fine. The left hand is connected all the way through. I would lift up, I think, more between the phrases. Now maybe you consider that two phrases. If so, that's fine. Otherwise, if it's one phrase, you connect it all. And then lift up. You decide, although the phrasing they've got in here makes it a little easier to play. Because you got to move your hands sometimes and the phrasing allows you to do that. And you think, well, the pedal's going to cover it all up anyway. Maybe, but we want to feel the phrasing. We want to feel this music. And so lifting up helps us to feel it. Yeah. We're kind of forcing it right now, but eventually you want to get it so comfortable you get into the music and you start feeling it and the lifting up does that, helps to do that. Dynamics, it's, that's the melody. If you can't bring the melody out, then it's the right hand. But if you can, bring the melody out and play that other notes soft. If you can, ideally. You see, they have a thing up above where they say the alto voice is the melody, it's the lower voice in the treble clef. At least they give you that, otherwise you would know what an alto voice was and that would mean nothing to you. This is basically in four parts. There harmony, harmony, there's like four note chords going on here. You have here, all of these, maybe not at the same time, but they're overlapping so they hear, the ears can hear them and that's what counts. So you got this, four notes, the bass is on the bottom, tenor's the next one, alto's here, and the soprano's on top. And that's basically how they label them. So the alto voice is just is the bottom voice in the treble clef. And if there are none, like at the beginning, that's that's still it. So you want to bring out the melody if you can. Now, when you get down toward the bottom, the last line, it switches to the upper voice, the melody, and go up. All the way through the last line, I'm pretty sure the melody is the top voice. The, which means you bring that out if you can. Speed, well fortunately it's slow because it's a tricky one to play. Tenderly, well that comes after you've learned it and you get to know it well and you can relax and you're getting into it. Then you think tenderly and play it tenderly. Whatever that means, it's just gentle. How fast is... Sort of these eighth notes gonna slow it down. How fast do you want to do those to go? And that kind of tells you how the rest of it goes. Now there can't be any hesitations anywhere. It's gotta be a steady beat. Especially when you the left hand is doing the throughout. You don't want to hesitate anywhere in that. That would mess that up all up. Then on top of that, they have the pedal. Uh, they're showing overlapping pedal throughout. The hands do their thing first and then the pedal. They're pedaling the pickup note, which is okay, because it's repeated, and the only way we can connect it is to pedal it. So that works out fine too. So at the beginning, change on each beat. The idea is we don't want to smear up the melody. I spoke too soon, didn't I? No. Go ahead and change it on each beat. Here. Change it, change it with the right hand melody on, on the beats. And that's basically it throughout. If it gets too blurry for you, change it. But on most part, they're changing it on each beat. And I'm kind of wondering if maybe that's an error at the, at the first line next to the last measure here. If maybe they meant to put it in to change on each beat and they just didn't because you're doing it everywhere else. When the melody starts getting a little wild, they're changing it. Now there's a polka retardando at the bottom. Slow down a little bit. Not a big slow down, just a little one. And also keep in mind in the left hand there at the end, 
that G is tied, the eighth note is tied, you just, you just add the C to it. You can use third finger there if you want, because 